Now this topic of accents is really, really important. Think about a word that we often use in phonics. A ant ant. A ant 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 ant. Now what we want them to do in a phonics program is to here put the representation for the phoneme a which happens to be represented by the A, but the A can represent about 12 different sounds in the, in the written code. But what we want in ant is for them to put that representation for that sound, which here is represented by the phonetic symbol for A, there's a at monster. We want them to put the A here as the representation for that A speech sound. So we want them to go A, ant, ant, ant. But what, think about accents. For example, I've been working in Australia, and in Australia, children don't use a, ah, that phonetic symbol, that sound. They don't use that sound when they say the word ant, even though they're using this word in the beginning of most phonics programs that they use. What they do is they use this sound. They use the, not the r, not the or, not the ow. Where are you? They use this sound. <laughs> There's the phonetic symbol, it's air. They actually say int, int. But we don't want them to go, like I just did duck hands, lines, numbers, ant. We don't want them to go, what are the sounds I use? Sound it out, int, int, okay, int. We don't want them to do that because the written code was, was written based really on, think about these phonetic symbols, it was really based on using a universally um, you know, recognised way of representing the sounds. The problem is we don't talk like that, but we're not asking children to change the way they speak. When I'm teaching children to read and spell using um, phonics in Australia, I'm not saying you've got to say ant like I would do, but what they do is they, tra so I say you're going to translate. So use the sounds that I'm talking about, the a ant ant but you can go at and and oh and so you're translating afterwards does that make sense